Hi, this is Dan from Pico America, and normally at a train show, you and I would probably have a conversation face to face. But since this is virtual, um, we wanted to say thanks to the folks and to all of you watching the virtual Rocky Mountain train show, and hope that we can do this live again in the future. So one of the things we would normally do is have lots of our newest uh, items um, so that you could see them at the show. But you'll also probably find that many of these are already at your favorite Pico retailer. So a lot of these you can see in person if you head to your favorite shop. We've got the Pennsylvania and the Denver Rio Grande ore car here. Uh, this year we decided to go ahead and put an ore car load into our ore cars um, as well as our hopper cars. There's a coal load in them. The loads for all of these cars are lightweight and they are removable and of course you've got older cars uh, that we've done in the past you can always add loads to those as well um, because those are separately available. The Union Pacific or uh, coal car uh, also has the um, wonderful American flag decorations that people really seem to love. Um, you definitely want to see that in person and then following up our mini train here is the Santa Fe boxcar. Uh, of course our boxcar doors all have uh, they all open and shut and they can lock nicely into place, but there's great decorations here on a train. You can either put it all together or make your own with whatever we have from the entire Pico catalog. And since one of the best things about a train show is that you get to see trains running, we wanted to make sure you got to see that today. So we've got a Denver Rio Grande mogul here running on our mixed collection of stock that's new this month. So we're going to go ahead and turn the light on, ring the bell, to do to the horn and we'll be off on our way. And thanks Dan for getting us started with the G-Scale new products from Pico. I'm Jonathan Metter and we're going to talk a little more about those. And for you HO fans, we also have some cool new things for you as well, so stay tuned. But just a few highlights. Uh, this, there's a lot of uh, items in the, in the new items flyer and we're bringing you over uh, 70 new items for the year. But just a, a few little highlights I, that kind of uh, strike my fancy. Uh, some great new uh, locomotives for you and especially uh, attractive is the Union Pacific Mogul. We actually uh, hired a very uh, uh, well-respected artist to do a painting for the tender uh, featuring some art of the, the uh, Union Pacific elk uh, scene that uh, is very reminiscent of original Union Pacific art from the 1800s. Uh, I think that's going to be one you want to see in person and have that running on your railroad. And, of course, the Warbirds uh, hopper cars celebrating the, uh, the planes and the, and the greatest generation that flew them back in uh, World War II uh, are very popular, and we have two more cars in that series. These are the new R3 switches, and no uh, major brand in G-Scale has made a medium-sized switch in G-Scale over the decades. Uh, so these are going to be available by the end of the year and they are uh, six foot diameter to match our R3 curves and I think you're going to find that that's a perfect medium sized switch so I think those are going to do very well for lots of folks and then a, a big highlight I know this year is going to be what's called the glass train which is a train that ran in Germany there were originally two of them one of them was destroyed uh, one of them survived uh, into later decades and the digital version with sound will also include a digitally operated pantograph raising and lowering uh, so some really cool features there and I think the uh, the rail yet or rail jet train is going to be very popular uh, that also is matching cars to go with uh, the rail jet Taurus or Taurus locomotive lots of cool new stuff coming this year and get get your hands on that catalog as soon as you can and also check it out on our website uh, we appreciate you doing that and for our HO fans Pico has some great stuff to offer for you uh, I would like to start off with our Pico roadbed track um, re reliably available I think it's the best looking roadbed track on the market it goes together nicely uh, it comes apart nicely and can be reconfigured however you want and it's marvelously flexible. I love to do this. This is very cool. It'll go over any kind of little irregularities on the floor or on the tabletop. I think you'll find if you give that a look, you'll find it to be a great track for you. And other things in Pico HO and InScale, uh, the Pico Smart Control Light digital system 
Smart Control Lite is very easy to use. has a nice digital display, uh, two and a quarter amps of power, so it's great for almost every um, layout uh, except a really large layout. It can actually be expanded with boosters uh, that are Locomet enabled. It's a tethered system, but for most layouts, it, it's perfectly fine. And I think that's also worth a, worth a look. Uh, and I think you might be pleased with that. What most, most folks are waiting for is uh, uh, some news from Pico about American style trains. Just a moment though. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about the Pico Hobby Line HO building kits. These are a bunch of great little kits. No more than $20 each. Uh, you can spend that on, you know, on, on a fast food lunch today. Um, they are very precise fitting. Uh, they go together. There's no fussing and filing as there is with so many kits. Uh, give, give them a look. I think you'll be pleased. And finally, the thing that people have been waiting for uh, is American rolling stock from Pico in HO scale. And we're starting off with what's called the Sprinter. That's right here in Southern California. It connects with uh, the Amtrak Surfliner and Metrolink and the Coaster Services. And it's a diesel-powered uh, commuter rail service. This is the, the, how the train looks. This is a typical German paint scheme, but we're making uh, the, some modifications to the tooling with the big air conditioners, much bigger than these, that are needed here in Southern California. And our crews have been out doing recordings and photo photographic safaris uh, to make sure we bring you the details of that train. Uh, it's got a lot of cool, authentic sounds that you're going to hear. Uh, there will be a, a non-decoder, decoder-ready version uh, that's ready for DC. There will also be two road numbers in sound-equipped DCC decoder-equipped versions. And there are also uh, three rail versions for those who want that. But most folks are going to go for the sound-equipped uh, versions. And you'll be very pleased with the decoder. It's fully NMRA compliant. Uh, in fact, when the NMRA uh, reviewed our, our Pico 4.1 smart decoder, uh, they, they even told us they were impressed. They said nobody passes on the first, uh, first go around. This thing passed with flying colors. So it's fully NMRA compatible and has an NMRA compliance warrant. So if you're concerned about those things, if, is it really going to operate on my DCC system? Yes, it will. And it's going to bring you a ton of authentic sounds as well as uh, the lighting features and a great running model. So that's coming uh, late summer for uh, fans of commuter rail service. And I think you'll be interested in that model. And we've also got a ton of interest so far in this little new Whitcomb diesel switcher. It's a 65-ton diesel that was built by Whitcomb in, during World War II. Built in Illinois, shipped over to Europe for use by the U.S. Army Transportation Corps. And it was all over Europe. Uh, they served on the first train into Rome, first train into Paris, first train across the Rhine. Uh, so many important historic things and after the war many of them stayed there and were involved in just rebuilding and, and stayed as re reliable good running locomotives. Many of them also came back to America uh, after the war and they were expected to be needed in Asia but that, that was over before they could get them there. So they were sold off to uh, short lines and industrial railroads all over the country. We'll keep you in suspense for now. Right now, the, uh, the U.S. Army Transportation Corps version with the authentic European buffers and European couplers, that's what's coming first in late summer. Uh, it'll be in the U.S. Army's basic paint scheme. Uh, but there are plenty of Pico uh, European cars to build an authentic train. So if you're interested in the history or if you're into European trains, that's a great model for you. And other folks can look forward. Uh, we'd love to hear from you on your, your thoughts of what you would like to see. We've been amazed at the people who know about these locos and are, are real fanatics about, uh, wow, that's just such a cool little loco. Uh, I love it. I want to have one for my railroad, even if I have to, to paint it myself. So give us some info. Let us have the feedback. We'd love to paint one up, uh, maybe in a, in a road that's uh, in of interest to you. But that'll be coming later later this year. Thanks a lot.